Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. and what you believe are not always the same. Take the mysterious cults of mysticism, occultism, or spiritualism. Some people think such things are what they look like. Others say there is more to it. Some are drawn to it, others repulsed by it. The tale we're about to unfold concerns a man who thought belief in the unnatural showed a weakness of will, and it tells what happened to make him change his mind. Charlie, my boy, there is no such thing as a house that is haunted. I have stood at night below the cliffs on the beach, and I've seen all the windows suddenly light up uh, as though a, a ghost had lit a candle in each room. <laughs> well, Charlie, maybe someday I'll go have a look at it. Well, why not now? You're not afraid, are you? mystery drama, The Haunted Mill, taken from that classic tale of the unseen world by Richard Donovan, was adapted especially for Mystery Theater by James Agate, Jr., and stars Ralph Bell and Russell Horton. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Doctors, by nature, are careful, cautious, scientific, and have inquiring minds. Alexis Carell, the Nobel Prize doctor, once said, a few observations and much reasoning leads to error. Many observations and a little reasoning leads to truth. Meet Dr. James Patmore, a man of reason who could not believe his senses when faced with the truth. What I am about to relate is so weird and startling, especially for a man trained in science as I am, that I can only let the facts speak for themselves and have you who hear my voice reject my tale or accept it. I am a member of the Royal College of Physicians, author of a number of medical books, but it was my decision to take up practice in the small town of Brenton that changed my life and almost everything I believed in. One night at exactly midnight, there was a knock at my cottage door. Come in, come in. Uh, oh, good Lord, man. You're bleeding. Here, let me help you to a chair. Uh, I, I don't know what happened. I, I saw your light. I just managed to crawl here. Uh, you're the doctor, aren't you? Oh, don't talk. Yes, uh, yes, yes, I'm the doctor. Here, now, press this against your forehead. Just a second now. I want to move this kerosene lamp a little closer to see. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. That doesn't look too bad. You were fortunate, young man. I'm, uh, I'm Charles Royce. Uh, we haven't met. I... Oh, oh well, just, just swabbing the cut. Clean it out. I've got some wood in there. What did you do, run into a tree? Oh, uh, I'm Dr. Patmore. Oh, you're not a native, so I should say welcome. Uh, when I left Brenton three years ago, we didn't have a doctor for 50 miles. I've uh, been away at sea all that time, doctor. Uh-huh, uh -huh. yes, that was cleaner. Well, I've only taken up practice here last year. Charles Royce. Yes, sir. Are you the, um, is that your uh, father and mother on Gorse Hill Farm, about uh, two miles south of town? Oh, you know? Oh, yes, very well. I've been treating your father's lumbago and your mother's arthritis. Yes, indeed. They told me about their wild son. And I expect that you are here. Uh, not as wild as they like to make out. It's uh, just their way of explaining why I was shipped off to sea. 
Well, not that I'm sorry. I liked it. Uh, there we are. Now try to keep that bandage around your head. Would you like some tea? Oh, I certainly would. Uh, you don't mind if I shed my boots and my jacket? They are so... Put them over by the fire. Uh, thank you, I will. Uh, it was really amazing. What happened to me? I was on my horse. I know that. It's a... It's the mystery of the whole thing. I really don't know. I... Here we are. Drink this while it's hot, eh? I was on my way to see Hannah. Oh, that's the girl I was hoping to marry. And I used to see a lot of her before. Well, I was riding along up by the haunted mill, and suddenly something seemed to lean down at me out of a tree branch over my head. And that's all I remember was knocked right off my horse onto the ground. And when I came to, my horse had bolted. There was this blood streaming down over my eyes. Somehow I saw your cottage, the light, and managed to get here. It, that's all I remember. Now, you didn't see anything when it happened? Stars. That's about all. Oh, boy. This tea hits the spot. Is there someone in town who doesn't like you? Yes, I guess there is. <laughs> Do you think this person would have... Uh... I think he could have ambushed me in the dark, yes, but... Well, frankly, I don't think he has enough guts. It's like this, Dr. Patmore. Why don't you I... call me Jim? I'll call you Charlie, if I may. Oh, glad to. Well, uh, three years ago, I wanted to marry Hannah Bliss, and I still want to marry her, but three years ago, I was 17, and I listened to my father and mother, and they said, you're too young, you wait. So I went to sea. Well, actually, my father arranged that I was sent. And I got back last week. Three years, almost to the day. My folks were glad to have me back, but all I really cared about was that they said, all right, you still want to marry Hannah? And I said, yes. And they said, that's too bad. She's met up with Silas Hart, and she's going to marry him. Doctor, I didn't even unpack my bag. I went right out the door to see her. Charlie, it's not you. you you're here. Hello, Hannah. You didn't change much. You have, Charlie. You look taller and stronger. I, I almost wouldn't know you. You got prettier. I'm... Uh, I can't believe it's you. Three years, Hannah. I was only a boy then. Um, is it, is it true about you and Silas? Who told you? Mom and Dad. In fact, at the moment I walked in the door, you, you're going to marry him? Y yes. I don't understand. I, I went away believing you would wait. You told me you would. Well, three years is a long time. I would have waited ten years for you. Well, how would I know when you'd come back, Charlie? If you'd come back... What are you talking about? I I wrote you from every single port we hit. I told you my plans. What, Charlie? I didn't get any letters. Oh, no. Not one letter. That's the truth. Not one? So I, I, I gave up on you. Why would they do that? What are you saying? You know what I'm saying. Your folks were just as much against our marrying as my folks. They took my letters. They must have. Oh, Charlie. For three years, not a day passed, but I was thinking of you. About the life we'd have together. And all along, I, I, I thought you felt the same way. I did. I know I did, but what can, what can I do? Do? About Silas? We've posted the bands. We're getting married in three weeks. Hannah, do you love him? <sighs> I thought so. Oh, Charlie, listen, that was before. That was when I thought I'd never see you again. And now that you see me again? I don't want you to go away. I don't want to go away either, Hannah. But what will we do? Never mind. It'll, it'll work out. Like the old saying goes, love will find a way. Did love find the way, Charles? Well, I guess it did, Doctor. I, I mean, uh, Jim. Hannah and I have been seeing each other every day, every evening, that is, for the whole week. And tonight she was going to tell Silas she couldn't go through with the wedding. 
So now Silas knows, eh? Well, I think so. If he showed up there, he was supposed to see her at 8. I was on my way over about 10 to find out what happened, and that's when I got hit by whatever it was. Yeah, that's right. It was just as I was passing the haunted mill. I wonder... What is it? You uh, wonder what? Maybe because I was so near the haunted mill, maybe that had something to do with it. How could it? <laughs> You're new in town, Jim. That mill, everyone here, we all know that place is haunted. Charlie, you were knocked down by something solid, something made of wood, not by a ghost. You shouldn't have taken that mill road. Oh, I... come now, come. There's no such thing as a house that is haunted. Have you ever been there, Doctor? <laughs> Hardly. I wouldn't waste my time. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I've seen... Well, not lately, but when I was a boy... What have you seen? Oh, I have stood at night on the beach below the cliffs, and I have seen the windows suddenly all light up like a... like a ghost had lit a candle in each room. All right. Well, maybe someday I'll have a look at it. Well, why not now? Now? It's past midnight. You're not afraid, are you? What are you talking about? I've talked to people like you before. Now, maybe I haven't had the education, but I like to find out and see things for myself. You don't want to see for yourself. You get your learning from books. All right. All right, I'll go. But does it have to be right now this minute in the dead of night? Yes, I want to take you right now, Jim. Now, when it's dark. Now, when there's been a storm. Now, when all the elements have been riled up. And I think maybe there's some learning you have in store. <laughs> Morning, Hannah. Well, oh, you're up early feeding the chickens. Charlie, where were you last night? I, I waited. Your head, what's happened to you? Oh, don't worry, it's a big bandage over a small cut. Oh, you had me so worried. Silas left at 9 o'clock and I waited and waited and there was that terrible storm and you never came. Oh, not from choice, darling. I was riding by the haunted mill and... Well, something attacked me. I, I was on my way over to see you. What do you mean, something attacked you? Knocked me right off my horse. <laughs> this is Dr. Pat Marsal. He has two. I borrowed it till he could round up mine. It bolted and ran away. Are you all right? Well, of course I am. It's, it's just a big bruise. Charlie, it's Silas. Oh. That's what I came to find out. Uh, how did he take it? What did you tell him? Oh, he was so fierce. I told him it was all a mistake, that I'd become engaged to him because... I thought you were never coming back. He was like a, a hunted animal, backing away. I said that you and I were going to get married. And he cursed you and said how he wished you'd never come back, how he wished your ship had been sunk at sea. I, I made him stop. I, I couldn't listen anymore. Now, don't worry. Silas won't do anything. Oh, it's not me I'm worried about. His eyes went so funny. And I remember when he said goodbye, he said... If I can't marry you, Hannah, nobody else will. An idle threat by a rejected suitor? A strange little town, Brinton by the sea. Strange inhabitants. The town and the town's people are almost as though they hadn't been touched by the 20th century. And it is here that a modern doctor, James Patmore, has come to practice. How could he fit into a community that appeared to be in the grip of fear, fate, and fantasy? We shall learn more when I return shortly with Act Two. For centuries, astrologists, psychics, and numerologists, and others have tried to probe into the unexplainable mysteries this is what Dr. Jim Patmore is faced with. Reconciling scientific fact with forbidden knowledge. That dead of night visit to the haunted mill with Charlie Royce turned out to be impossible for him to forget or dismiss. The haunted mill was forlorn and mournful looking and in the clearing skies and moonlight, singularly weird. But I could see it for what it was. And I knew it was merely a disused, abandoned building. 
What I did not know was that this would be the last time I would see Charlie Royce alive. How about we go inside? I'm just standing here waiting for the windows to light up. You are a disbelieving stubborn man, aren't you? Now, come on, I'll, I'll push open this wooden bolt that fastens the door. What's that? Bats. They nest here. Well, how do you like it, homie? Well, it doesn't frighten me. Shine your lantern higher, Jim. Did you ever see such large spiders making webs? What else could you expect in an abandoned building? All right, Charlie, where's your ghost? I'm here, I'm waiting for some manifestation. Just settle down. Wait and see. Look up there. Well, all I can see is flying bats. No, I, I mean, the roof has fallen in. I can see the moon. Charlie, I have seen roofs fallen in before. What I came here for are your apparitions. If there is nothing to see but bats and spiders... What was that? Something closed the front door. It's it stuck. I, I, I can't get it open. Let me bring the lantern over. You see, there's no knob on this side. Uh, uh, Jim, hold it a little lower. I want to take a look through the crack between the jam and the door. Jim, the bolt is closed. The wooden bolt has been drawn across the door, locking us in here. See for yourself. Oh, great heavens, you're right. It's been bolted shut. Oh, someone's playing games with us. Or something. Oh, this is ridiculous. All right, whoever is out there, open up this door. Open it up, I say, at once. <gasps> what? Is that somebody? It isn't a person, Jim. I've heard that crazy laughter since the first time I came up here when I was ten. Oh, nonsense. That's just the wind. All right, you out there. Open this door. Now open it. Jim, the door will open in its own time. <laughs> Believe me, I just... Just wait. Here. Take your lantern back and, and have a good look around. I do hope, Charlie, that this isn't some practical joke of yours to impress me. I'll tell you right now, whatever is going on is not the work of any supernatural demons. And nothing will make me believe it is. Jim, Jim, look out! Get out of the way! Oh, oh that was a close call. Oh, it's a miracle you weren't crushed. It just missed you by a hair. All right, I... Uh, I've had enough. I think it's time to go. You hear that? The bolt outside is opening itself. Oh, stop, stop now. Do you see anyone out there? It opened of its own accord. What did I tell you? Those that haunt the mill are letting us go now. Well, you can believe that if you want to. Uh... Jim, I'll tell you something... Something else that's strange, at least to me. This is the very first time I've been in the mill when I wasn't deathly afraid. Everything that's happened tonight, I... I could almost foresee it. It didn't frighten me. Do you think that finally I've been accepted by the spirits who live here? Spirits? <sighs> Frankly, Charlie, I don't know what to make of it, and I'm not going to pretend I do, but I can tell you this. I am sure there are physical reasons for everything that has happened here tonight. Physical, not metaphysical. Two days went by, and I heard no more from Charlie Royce. I was a little concerned over his head injury, so one night, after office hours, I went over to Gorse Hill Farm. It was about nine o'clock after dinner. Oh, I'm glad you stopped by, Doctor. Mr. Royce, good evening. I was going to come see you about my back. How is that uh, muscle tenderness? Yeah. On the whole, you've improved a great deal since last year, oh. you know? I have, I have still. Uh... I'll prescribe some new exercises for you to do. How's your son, Charlie, and uh, Mrs. Royce? We haven't seen Charlie since the night before last. Or was it the night before that? I don't know what that boy is up to. I really came by to see how that cut was mending. I'll tell you this. His mother's taken it pretty hard. He's away three years, back one day, and then... 
Out every day with that girl. I bet she knows where he is. You haven't seen him? He hasn't been here for two nights? Three. And his mother's crying her eyes out. You know what I think? Of course, I haven't been over to Hannah's folks to ask them. But I think those two young'uns ran away. I haven't mentioned that to Mrs. Royce, but that's what I think. But why would Charlie do a thing like that? Well, lots of reasons. Maybe Mr. and Mrs. Bliss weren't... Well, so all fired happy about Charlie showing up. They were kind of keen on him marrying Silas, you know. The hearts have got more money than the rest of the town put together. His brother Ezra has the Brinton Inn, one in Axminster, who runs a fleet of fishing boats. And Silas's mother and father, well, they say they own half the town. He'd be a darn good catch. What sort of work does Silas do? He does nothing. He doesn't have to. If you were going to come into property stretching from the seacoast clear over to the mill and back, you wouldn't have to work it. Well, I'm sorry Charlie is not here. I'd better start for home or I'll get blown off the road. You tell Charlie I stopped by and I'll be seeing you, Mr. Royce, with those exercises for your back. Now, don't worry about Charlie. He'll be back. Goodbye, now. Uh, doctor... Will you close that front door? He's blowing out every candle in the room. Either go out and close the door or come back in. I I can't budge this door. It won't move. It, it, it's not open. Doctor? Doctor? I can't see a darn thing in the dark. Doctor, are you still there? I'm still here, Mr. Rice. Uh, can you uh, strike a match? A match? Say, what happened to the fire? There was a fire in that fireplace. Why didn't you close that door? I couldn't, Mr. Ross. I pushed it with all my might. It wouldn't give. Here, maybe I've got a match. What's that, Doctor? Isn't there someone standing at the door? There is someone. Charlie. Charlie, is that, is that you? Charlie. It is you. You've still got that bandage on. Here, let me have a look. I'm not ready yet. Not yet. Not yet. Where have you been, boy? Your mother's been frantic. Tell mother that I love her. And I always will. But come on over to the fire. We were just going to light it. All the candles went out. Come on, sit down, boy. I have a long way to go. But I'm not... Ready, yet. You're going away again? Charlie! I can't see you, Charlie! I think he's gone, Mr. Royce. What do you mean he's gone? He, he, he was just here. We were talking to him. Charlie! Where is that boy? I didn't see him go out the door, did you? No. Ah, oh, here I found some matches. I light this candle. You're right. He isn't here anymore. I, I, I could see him. You know, because... Did you notice he had a kind of... greenish light all around him? Yes, I noticed that. L like when we fish at night. Phosphorescence, they call it. He didn't pass me to go upstairs. We didn't see the front door open. Maybe he got out somehow and he's standing outside. And I'll have a look. Charlie! Charlie! Hannah! What are you doing here? Come inside, child. Hannah! Did, did you see Charlie out there? No, I, I didn't, Mr. Royce. It's Charlie that I've come here about. Here, take off your wet things, dear. I, I can't stay. I, I promised Mother I'd be back as soon as I could. Oh, Dr. Patmore, this is Hannah Bliss. How do you do? What is it, Hannah? What about Charlie? Did you two decide to come back? I, I, I don't know what you're talking about, Mr. Royce. Charlie and I didn't go anywhere. Is he here? Uh, can I talk to him, please? Charlie's not here. I, I mean... I mean, I thought he was just now. It, it's so hard to explain. 
I thought he was with you. Uh, Hannah, these past few days, you mean to say that you have not seen Charlie? No, not, not for three days. Well, what's the matter? What, what do you mean he was here just now? Why won't he come to see me? Well, what, uh, what have I done? Are you saying that you haven't seen him for three days? I haven't, no. The last time was the morning after I told Silas we couldn't get married. Charlie had an accident, his, his head. That afternoon, we were going to the church, change the old bands, and ask the priest to post new ones. I've been waiting and waiting and nearly going crazy, and then I thought maybe he'd decided he didn't want to marry me after all, so I put my pride in my pocket and came over here to find out, but you say he's not here. When will he be back? We don't know. Hannah, it's all right. I'm sure it's just a misunderstanding. He'll show up. Do you think he's all right? Oh, well, of course he is. No, he... You trot back home, dear, before more parents get worried about their children. All right? Yes, sir, I will. And thank you, Dr. Patmore. And you, Mr. Royce. I I'm sorry if I caused any trouble. I, I didn't mean to. I'll, I'll make Charlie a really good wife. I promise I will. Oh, good. of course you will. Now, go on home. Good night, Mr. Royce. Good night, Dr. Patmore. Good night. Hannah hasn't seen my boy in all these days either. But we saw him, Doctor, didn't we? I mean, I, I, I'm not going crazy. We saw him and we heard him. One possibility, a blow like he'd received could have caused temporary amnesia. Charlie may be wandering around not knowing who he is or where he is. Well, if that's really him we saw... What did he mean? He wasn't ready yet. Oh, Lord. What am I going to tell his mother? That you saw him and he's all right and he'll be back. Do you honestly believe that, Doctor? It, it, it just isn't ordinary what happened. Do you know what I think, Doctor? No. I think Charlie is dead. And that wasn't Charlie who came here. It was his spirit. Oh, now, nonsense. You can't believe that. Oh, yes, I do. I feel it in my bones. I know it. Maybe we'll find Charlie somewhere. His body. But we'll never find him alive. Could they have seen the ghost of Charlie Royce and not his living body to appear like that and disappear? What human can do that? Or were both the doctor and the boy's father hypnotized somehow? But why was Charlie's father so positive he would never again see his son alive? If there are answers to these mysterious happenings, let's hope we find them when I return shortly with Act Three. The world of James Patmore, M.D., was being shaken. The science of cause and effect seemed no explanation of the mysterious occurrences in the little town of Brinton-by-the-Sea. And if scientific deduction failed Dr. Patmore, his destiny was somewhat less than controllable. That concerned him deeply. He knew he could not let himself be frightened or feel fated. He had to find out. I had to find out. Where had Charlie Royce gone? Was he alive or dead? Hiding or killed? Days passed and still no sign of him. He had simply vanished. Some suspected Charlie's rival Silas, who said nothing, and said he knew nothing. One day, Silas's brother Ezra Hart, who ran the Brenton Inn, asked me to come see his wife, who was ill. I examined her and then joined him downstairs where he was working at the bar. How is she, Doc? It's a touch of flu, Ezra. There's nothing more. A lot of it going around. Uh, how long will she be laid up? It's hard to say. Two weeks, about. Now, you keep her warm and quiet. Two weeks? Well, what am I going to do about the inn? You can't get any help these days. Oh, surely there's someone you can call on to help you out. What about your brother Silas? Oh, you must be joking, Doctor. Silas? The worst thing my father ever did was to leave him money. He hadn't lifted a finger to do an honest day's work since he was 15. 
He's not ambitious like Charlie Royce was. Was? Uh, I mean, is. For all I know, I just haven't seen him lately. Did Charlie Royce come to the inn, Ezra? The chief of police asked me the same question. Once well, about time they started asking questions. My guess is that Charlie went back to sea. Anyway, I told him Charlie was here the day after the big storm. He had a bandage around his head. Said he was going to see a priest later, but he was still kind of groggy from falling off his horse the night before. About, about six it was. He, he sat right where you are, Doctor, right there. Drank a pint of ale and, and started to get dark fast, real black outside. Another big storm blowing in off the sea. I turned around and suddenly it was gone. Was he walking or riding, Ezra? He was walking. His horse had bolted the night before and he still hadn't found it. I said to the police chief, you have to cross the common to get to the rectory. And there are several pools and treacherous hollers on the common. You ought to search there. So I suppose they're looking there, eh? Well, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, how much do I owe you for visiting Mrs. Hart? Oh, I'll send you a bill, Ezra. Don't worry. Oh, Charlie will turn up, I'm sure. Like a bad penny. <laughs> you know, I can understand you saying that. After all, Silas is your brother. Well, even if he weren't. It was wrong of Charlie to come back and turn that girl's head. That wasn't right. No, sir. Charlie knew Hannah was spoken for. Why, even the bands had been posted. Them running around made Silas the joke of the town. You'll find lots of folks here, but not too all fired sorry that Charlie's gone. <laughs> Charlie's disappearance lengthened into weeks, then months. Everyone for miles around had some theory. Finally, the police gave up their search. No one seemed to care anymore except his father and Hannah Bliss. Winter was upon us, roads almost impassable. And... But I had one patient I always managed to see, sick from disappointment and anxiety. A rather difficult illness to cure. The fourth time this week, Doctor. You're spoiling me. Oh, I had to pass this way anyway, Hannah. I had a visitor this morning. Someone I hadn't seen in a long time. Do you remember Silas Hart? Oh, yes, I certainly do. Where was your mother? Oh, she was out at the market and Silas walked in the door. I hope he didn't upset you. I'm afraid he did. I've never seen him looking like that. Rings around his eyes, as if he hadn't slept for weeks. He said, I've kept from seeing you as long as I could. I know you aren't well. What did he want, Hannah? He said, Charlie's been gone a long time now. What about us? And I said, Charlie was gone for three years, and I didn't wait for him. This time I'm going to. And how long did he stay? About an hour. He said... Couldn't we try to make it like it was before Charlie came back? And I said to him, No, Silas, I'm going to wait for him. And then he got up and went to the door and said, Well, that may be, Hannah, but if it's Charlie you want, I think you're going to have to wait a long, long time. <laughs> calmed Hannah down. It was the uncertainty as much as the anxiety that made her ill. If only she could know what had happened to her fiancé, I felt that she could recover, even if the news was the worst. On the way home, late as it was, I could see the old mill. For some reason, I took the cliff road, the sea churning below me. Doctor! Doctor Petmore! Hello, Ezra. Doctor, what are you doing out there? Doctor, quick, come and help me. What's the matter? Can, can you climb down these rocks to the beach with me? There's trouble. What is it? It's Silas. He came to the inn an hour ago, and he, 
He handed me the keys to his house and he said, here, I won't be needing these anymore. <laughs> then he walked out. I, I ran out and asked people and they said, try the cliff road. When I got here, S Silas was standing out there on one of them rocks. I called to him. He, he didn't hear me. Then I saw you coming, Doctor, so I ran up to the road to get you. I don't see him. I don't see anybody. Silas! Silas! Where are you? Silas! Uh, Silas! I had it. It's that girl. I know it is. Silas! Come back! There's somebody out there. Yes, sir. Not a soul. The sea, the rocks, seagulls. Now, come along. There's nothing we can do here. Uh, I bet when you went up the road to get me, Silas went on home. Come on now. Uh, stupid fool. Over a girl to do that. Now, why are you so convinced that he's taken his life? There was something very wrong, but I could not believe, as did Ezra, that it was Hannah's doing. If Silas had drowned himself, only a very guilty conscience could have driven him to it. We climbed back up to the cliff road, and as I mounted my horse, it suddenly reared and almost threw me. For up on the hill stood the old mill, every single window ablaze with light. It was there, I felt, that the key to unlock this mystery lay. The only one person I could trust was Charlie Royce's father, John. So I went to see him and persuaded him to hitch up his cart with his favorite horse, Princess, and accompany me to the haunted mill. I thought you said it was all superstition, Doctor. You didn't believe in all that. Mr. Royce, if your journey should result in nothing, will you keep the matter a secret? Certainly. But why? All my adult life, I have taken with a great grain of salt the possibility of anything unnatural happening in our very natural world. Well, then why are you going to the middle? One can always be wrong. Mm. <laughs> Princess! <laughs> Princess! <laughs> What's gotten into you? She absolutely refuses to go on. Stop it! Go on now! Wait, wait, wait. I see what it is. Up in the road ahead. You see it, Mr. Rice? Good Lord. A body. A corpse. As if I can see right through it. It's got blood streaming out of its head. Lying there like that, Mr. Rice. Mr. Rice, we're neither of us imagining this. Are we? Is it really there? I... I think it's Charlie. It glows, that, that greenish light, the same way Charlie was when he came to see us. It's gone. And I'm afraid Princess won't move a step. All right, tell the mayor, Mr. Royce. <laughs> the mill is hardly half a mile away. We'll each take a lantern. <laughs> you mean walk it? Yes, yes, now. <laughs> Charlie. Now, don't be frightened. The bats won't harm you. What's that? It's only this old mill laughing at us. Where do those steps lead? I've got to go up there. I have the same feeling, Mr. Royce, as if... As if we were drawn up there. We have to go. All right. One step at a time. I'll go first. Hold your lantern high. Uh, you see, there's a... Uh, closed trap door at the top there. I can't explain it, but I can't wait to get up these steps. John Royce was one step right behind me. I reached the top and slowly pushed open a trap door. As I did, I am absolutely certain that I heard a sigh. Uh, oh. uh, they must have Kept the grain for thrashing up here. There's still a sack of it over there in the corner. Yes. Well, let's have a look. Oh. Oh, no. What is it? 
I touched it just now with my foot, and I... Uh, uh, Mr. Royce, there is neither corn nor chaff in this sack. It's tied up at the top of the cord. I, here, I have a knife done. Do you really want to open the sack? We have to, Doctor. You know we have to. All right, then. Let me cut the cord. Oh. Oh, good Lord. Mr. Royce, don't look. Don't, 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 don't look. Surely. Oh, my Charlie. Murdered. A bullet hole in his skull. His throat cut. The coroner's verdict was murder by person or persons unknown. Whoever hid Charlie's body in the old mill knew that no one in this town would look there. I may have been wrong to doubt the spirit of that poor boy trying to tell us where to find his body. But was I wrong about Silas? Was it not guilt that impelled Silas to seek his own watery death? Who else had the motive? The very next day, the old mill collapsed into a pile of wood. It had given up its last ghost. To Dr. Jim Patmore, the greatest mystery of all was that he should have been selected by some supernatural power to bring this crime to light. I shall return shortly. Those who make a study of the occult believe that anyone who has suffered a violent death cannot rest until that death has been avenged. That the spirit will keep reliving its final agony like a phonograph needle stuck in the last groove of a record. We trust fate will be kinder to you and that you may never meet up with a homeless, tortured, wandering spirit. Our cast included Ralph Bell, Russell Horton, Patricia Elliott, and Court Benson. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time... Pleasant dreams. I hope you enjoyed this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more, please subscribe to this channel. You can also visit my other YouTube channel.